Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Um, yeah, actually, he's gonna wait a second. I'm gonna give Pogo's uh, consort an opportunity to feed. There he is. You want that? Okay, dude. He's got a little stuck shedding despite us misting down the cage and giving him fresh water. It's just typical. All right, all right. Keep your scales on, dude. <laughs> You're gonna get fed. This is a Congo uh, phase green water cobra. So she's right there. I'll use this hook. Hello. And just like Thud, he's uh, very interested. You know, if if. These were down in, you know, South Carolina, Florida area. You could easily mistake this for, you know, a speckled king snake. Um, they uh, look very, very similar. And like Thud, you know, an adult male, he's going to get two treats a week and uh, the little female ring water cobra is down, down there waiting, <laughs> really excited. I'm going to just feed that into the machine, come on, if you wag your head from side to side, Okay, dude, come on. So it's a little long for manipulating snakes at crows close range. So I'll just close that. I'll put the stick back in. Let me grab a morsel for this little uh, gal down here. Yeah, let me get on the other side. It's kind of hard to film her otherwise because she tends to <laughs> be very shy and quickly retreat. Hello. There you go. Isn't she pretty? She's a lighter face than the other guys. And, you know, all the snakes in the lair have their own distinct personalities. I know pretty much what I can do and what I can't do with uh, the different uh, s snakes. Although Thud is quite relaxed and easygoing, uh, these youngsters haven't reached that age where they really uh, are calm enough to uh, to do you know to take some liberties with them, moving them about and such. I wouldn't grab this gal by the midsection and move her like I would Thud. Uh, that would be bad. I wouldn't grab him at all because, you know, he's a wild-caught, not captive-born animal, and, you know, uh, this guy will, will hood and become quite aggressive. Um, so I don't, uh, uh, I don't take chances. Are you okay? Huh? Don't stress. I'm not going to take it from you. Go ahead. Go ahead. There you go. You got it lined up on the runway there, huh? They are just such pretty snakes. Yes, this is why I like to keep them. This is why I'm trying to get a small group to breed because they are very pretty snakes and 
you know, if you wanted to get a starter Cobra, these are these are the ones to get. They're just unfortunately not available. Um, you know, they're not assholes like uh, Cayuthia, um, but you're less apt to get bit. These are easier to move about. Um, they don't hook as well as Cayuthia, but uh, their, their venom is almost purely neurotoxic, which actually is somewhat good in this respect because you're not going to lose a pound of flesh if you get bit. Cayuthia bites, you're going to not only have significant neurotoxic uh, effects, but you're also going to have some serious cytotoxic effects and you know you're going to you know, I've known people to lose fingers from nausea, nausea bites and stuff, uh, as well as Cayuthia. Uh, you know, that guy in Michigan, you know, lost the whole top of his foot uh, to a Cayuthia bite. Um, you know, so if my uh, opinion is, uh, um, yeah, it's bad enough to get... Uh, uh, poisoned by a potent neurotoxin, it's worse because there's a significant local effect. Would you like another young lady, huh? Huh? Gotta move the first one down the pipeline. Hi. Yes, you're on camera. You're just figuring that out, huh? Yeah. Stay focused on the food, no? Uh, we've decided we're freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we give Chubby here a second one? Or, I don't think so. No, he's only had one. Oh, he didn't even eat that one. Oh. Chubby. What's up? No, don't come up. See, this is, the, this is a significant problem. You need to recognize it if it's thinking about coming up the hook. Uh, and you need to cut it off before it actually happens. That would be very bad. Here. No, no, no. Easy. Okay, you got it. He just didn't like me uh, touching him with the hook and pushing them back in. So maybe he'll be smart enough to do it on his own this time. There you go. So, <laughs> so now he has it. So we'll have to monitor him to see if uh, he's going to want another because he's going to eat this one for the S end. So we'll watch him. And what I'll do is I'll set one aside for him, otherwise I'll forget and I'll uh, feed him, uh, everything else I got here to Bucky. So we got, we got five small ones left for Bucky. Um, Bucky's been feeding pretty well. Hi Bucky. Hi Bucky. I know I see your mouth open. There you go, girly. Bucky is actually a pretty sweet snake. You know, look at that. <laughs> uh, for a boom slang, wild caught, um, you know, she is just a pretty easy going snake. When she's really hungry, though, uh, that's the time to watch out for her. But, you know, she doesn't get really defensive. Uh, she's pretty easy for me to handle. Uh, when I have her out of the cage for cleaning and stuff. Uh, unlike that crazy uh, male in the other room. I have a theory. Um, it's, you know, from all the observations of all the snakes I've been working with, uh, captive-born snakes have no fear of humans. Therefore, they're a lot more dangerous than some wild-caught snakes. Um, you know, I've seen this with the mambas, 
Uh, I can tell you that the wild caughts were a lot more reserved and a lot less uh, willing to make an attack or a strike uh, because they fear man. Um, what you up to, Buck? Uh, you know, and I just, uh, you know, just the way the mail is next door. What's up, girlie? Well, she's watching me. She seems a little alarmed, so I guess I will back off a bit. Yeah, go ahead. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. Um, so the, the male boom slang, you know, he launches himself out of the cage, all defensive, flares his neck. Uh, you know, Bucky just doesn't do that. Uh, uh, so, you know, my, my feelings are that, you know, working with the wild quads is a little safer than uh, uh, working with the captive borns, because the captive borns have known you since they're sort of born, and uh, uh, don't fear you as like a wild snake does. As soon as I can clear out one of those larger cages, like you saw the male in, uh, in previous videos, I'll move Bucky to some bigger quarters so she has room to stretch out a little bit. Hi, I know we see you. I'm not coming any closer, you're safe. Yeah, normally if I'm feeding her alone, and Laurie's not here with the camera, I, you never see this sort of behavior. She's very reluctant. Here. There you go, girlie. She does that so gently. Got it? There you go. Oh yeah, that was an easy mouthful there, uh, Mr. Viper Keeper. Yeah, these aren't, you know, these are these are hoppers, but I expended all the adult mice that I had uh, on various other creatures. So she'll get some, she'll normally eat three or four adult mice, and then generally she'll let me know that I've had enough and she'll wipe her face and sort of move back in the cage and um, but hoppers are a little smaller so you know maybe she'll finish all these maybe not this is three so far You know, the, the male next door is a very active snake. She's not, but, you know, her expenditure of energy is, you know, producing ova. And in this case, you know, those ova are not going to be fertilized and she's just going to pass them out of her digestive tract. Uh, you know, but that takes a significant amount of energy to produce those. And the fact that they're not going to be covered with a shell, it's not going to be so hard on a reproductive track. The, I've seen an electron and light microscopy of, of snake shells, and they're really rough like sandpaper. Um, I don't know, you know, what the creator was sort of thinking to make them so, uh, you know, so rough and not so easy on uh, their reproductive tract. One would think that uh, you would want really smooth surfaces so they pass easy. Yeah, instead they get egg bound. Yeah, it's just really awful. There you go, girl. That's all you're going to get uh, this week. 
and see. No matter where I am, I always like to have a hook and reach. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to reach over there for that, so I knew this one was behind me. So I just, I didn't even have to take my eye off the snake, which is something you, you try not to do. Well, she still wants some. Okay. Yeah, well, uh, okay, she'll, maybe later I'll bring something else up. Uh, yeah, she's not wiping her face like she usually does when she's done, so. You still hungry, girly, huh? Okay. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. You're okay. All right, so I'm going to feed Chubby here. Hi, dude. There you go. There's number two for you. You know, again, he's a fairly active snake like Thud, but not going to feed uh, more than they really need to sustain their weight. Oh, see that, that's scary because she's not accurate and you know it's just like that ricochet in the movies, you, got, you don't want to be ricocheted with the Arutu. Are you interested in coming out for something to eat again? Yeah, she's uh, she's been on feed all of a sudden. She goes on feed, off feed. Uh, uh, you know, I think she's coming into a reproductive cycle. And actually, um, in January, I'm gonna stick uh, a male in with her and see if we can uh, uh, get some babies out of her during the summer. Let's see, you know. Your hand is much different than the, than the high hand of uh, Mr. Viper Keeper. Uh, I have a much higher heat signature, as Lori can attest. Uh, my hands are just very warm. She's still following mine, just because of the interesting movement. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're pretty much done feeding for the weekend, so uh, she ate. She had two mice actually, so we're just kind of she's gonna have to just accept that fact and and uh, you know just uh, just go pout back in uh, on her <laughs> log or something. Okay, girly, sorry, but no food for you. You already ate. Oh, dog got it. Yeah, I mean that's. That's the problem. You you really want they're happy that they're feeding, but you know you don't want them to become a beast either. Well, like most cobras, thud is no different. Uh, they like to soil their water dishes uh, and use them actually as toilets. So first thing that we need to sort of do is ascertain where his head is. As I was saying, uh, we need to ascertain where the thud is located. Uh, it doesn't look like... Oh, he is in his, uh, his hut. Okay. Um, well, what I was going to say is uh, this useful uh, mirror can be used to look in places like this upper lid where where Thud hangs out. Um, now, because uh, Thud can rush out of his uh, cage and grab me by the wrist as I grab his, uh, his water dish, we have to come up with uh, an alternate way of uh, slowing him up. So we will use uh, the Uplex wherever I put the Uplex uh, right there. Dan, 
Okay, so uh, what we will do is we will put the Uplex um, right there. And this way it can be removed and uh, he will be slowed down in his effort to, uh, uh, to visit our hand. So Dan is going to go uh, clean that up and then in a few minutes we'll put it back. Well, we have a very rare guest appearance today by Miss Perp. She is almost never seen out day or night unless you drag her unwillingly from her hide. Uh, okay, so for those of you who don't know, perps are like the junkyard dog of the venomous snake world. They just live to bite things. It doesn't matter what it is, they just want to bite it. Uh, they make puff adders look really placid. Um, any rate, this is Trimosaurus purple maculatus, uh, also known as the perps. Uh, this is a captive born and bred specimen I got my, from my friend Kim Urban. Uh, painful first year of force feeding to get her feeding on her own, which is pretty typical of perps. Um, I've had lots born at the lair over the years. Uh, they're just really beautiful, very obnoxious snakes, and it's very rare to see her out and about, and I'm sure she's totally appalled that we noticed. Um, I think she was out because, you know, I misted everything down a little while ago. There's a low pressure system moving through, and she thought it was raining, so she would come out. But, nope, she's up there sunning herself, so... We'll let her uh, go about her business and not disturb her too much.